There we go. Great. Welcome. Um, I am Rachel Keegan Kelly, the Director of Enrollment, and you are now attending the SYI France um, Open House webinar, and we're so glad you're all here. Uh, just a, a minor housekeeping thing. We're, we decided to do this Zoom meeting using the meeting function, not the formal webinar function, so everyone can see each other's faces. We think that that is a much more um, interactive, connected way to do this. But I did just want to draw everyone's attention to the upper right hand corner. If you do want to see the presenters when they're speaking and see their faces in full, you can select um, speaker view up in the right hand corner, or you can select gallery view and see all of our faces like this. Um, just wanted to draw that to everyone's attention. We're going to, I think, have a very informative program for you today. Our hope is that by the end of this program, many of your questions have been answered and you've learned a lot more about what our SYI France program is all about from a curricular, extracurricular, and, and extracurricular perspective. Uh, we're going to start actually with um, the SYI France video, and then we're going to have um, uh, Mina Kadir, who is our resident director. She's going to have a conversation uh, with two recent alums, Anna Yankee and Damien Juice. And afterwards, we do have um, Anna's mom, Amy, and we have Damien's dad, Stephen, also here to share a few words on sort of the parent perspective. And that will follow um, Ms. Kadir's conversation and sort of panel conversation with the students. Once that's over, uh, we'll be about uh, 45 minutes into the event. We will transition to a question and answer, uh, as I'm sure many of you will have questions. We're going to do that in two ways. We're going to use the chat function so you can put your questions in the chat box anytime you have them. Uh, we won't answer them until we get to the question and answer session. But if you think of it now and want to add it, you feel free to go ahead. And we're also going to encourage folks to actually ask questions. And that will be just unmuting yourself and asking the question. And we've done a couple of these already for our other programs and it worked really well. People just take turns. Um, you can either raise your hand and I can call on you or you can just go ahead and unmute yourself. It's quiet and ask your question. So we will do that. Um, we're planning for the event to go a little over an hour, depending on how the questions go. If we can't get to them all, we'll certainly be in touch um, with you individually. The other thing we wanted to draw your attention to briefly is Bryce Koval is the country manager for France. He unfortunately could not be at this event today, um, but he is available. We will put his email into the chat box um, before the end of the event. And um, if, you are, if you have specific questions or you wanna have a further conversation, we encourage you to go ahead and schedule a call with one of our assistant directors of admission, either Bryce or Krista. And we'll put that link in the chat box as well for you to go in and just schedule a quick call with us. So um, without further ado, Shauna, I also want to quickly introduce Shauna Campbell, actually, our marketing admissions marketing manager, who I'm sure you've received lots of emails from. Um, and she has been the sort of mastermind behind all of this. So Shauna, if you want to kick the video off, please. So the first time we went to Mont Saint-Michel was with our host siblings. That was a really fun experience. We crossed the bay with them. So we were knee deep in quicksand. It was a really good way to bond with our host siblings and with each other this entire year. It's been about things being based on where we are or where we are going with the school next. You learn about something and then you get to experience it, which is really interesting because it makes classes a lot more engaging knowing that we're going to see the things that we're studying. I absolutely love Ren. The Marche de Lise is the biggest outdoor food market in France. So you have everything from vegetables to seafood to cheeses to bread, cakes, flowers. And it's not just for tourists. Really, it's the locals who go and just get their weekly groceries. Sometimes I'll go and get flowers for my host family. I could not have been placed in a better host family. Um, I think it's there where I've learned the most French and learned the most about French culture. I think I've learned a lot, especially, and retained that information just because our projects have been very, very interactive and place-based. We learned about the life of a soldier. There's a World War I monument at Place de la Marie, and there's the list of names of all of the soldiers. Each of us chose a soldier that was from Rennes, 
And we studied that soldier and we looked up the databases about him. It was really meaningful just to track the life of someone who actually lived where we're living right now. Even greater than Ren, the just the region of Britannia is really unique. And we spent a lot of time in classes learning about what makes it so unique. My friends have been a big part of this experience because I've been able to find a really good group of people who are just as adventurous as I am. I'm very glad I did SYA. It has opened my horizons to travel and being more independent. I think it just made me more excited to continue to expand my horizons and to learn more about the world. It really is a game changer. You can't explain it. You have to experience it. It's been one of the best decisions I've made in my entire life. Thanks, Shauna. Mina, over to you. All right. Uh, merci beaucoup, uh, Shauna uh, and Rachel. Uh, bonsoir à toutes et à tous. Uh, bienvenue. Welcome to everyone. Uh, it was really great to see the video again. I, I've seen it many times, but uh, it's always nice to relive some of these uh, moments. Uh, so you saw uh, a glimpse of our beautiful city, uh, Essoye France, um, has actually been in Rennes for uh, over half a century. It was uh, in 1967 when we started. Uh, Rennes is actually the capital of the Bretagne region. Uh, on the west side of France. Uh, and we'll talk more about uh, living in Rennes uh, in a few minutes with uh, two of our students who are here tonight, like Anna and Damien, who have kindly accepted uh, to join us on this call. So I'm going to give you an overview of our program and um, have our wonderful students share their experience. Uh, but before that, I will take a minute to uh, update you on the COVID situation uh, in France. So. Uh, we are obviously living similar situations in our countries during this global crisis. And uh, as we were getting ready um, to open our schools in January 2021, uh, our SWAs in-country and home office teams uh, worked extensively uh, on a COVID plan that you have perhaps seen or even read uh, on our website. And we are continuing um, to do this work and uh, we're meeting frequently uh, to discuss different strategies for this coming fall. So while we do not know right now uh, what requirements will be put in place next fall uh, regarding vaccines, uh, SWE will make a policy uh, about vaccination uh, that will take account into account both um, national and host country laws. So more information will be available in coming months and uh, we will update you uh, and your families at the time of uh, your acceptance. So very quickly about uh, France, um, we have started um, vaccinations on December 28th. Uh, there are currently uh, 900 uh, vaccination centers. And as of last week, uh, we're doing over 50,000 vaccinations a day. So as you all know, uh, the world of study abroad was turned upside down last year when uh, our students had to go home early. Uh, but from our point of view as educators, uh, we think that our work is uh, even more important today uh, because we can say that during this uh, global crisis, each nation uh, has looked beyond the national borders. Uh, and, and, and we know that it's more crucial than ever for our students to understand both the complexity of their own nation, but also our profound uh, global interdependence. Uh, and this way, we believe that uh, we play a key role uh, in creating and shaping citizens uh, who understand uh, difference, engage in dialogue, uh, can build bridges, and uh, can go beyond the notion that uh, we live in a world that is chacun pour soi, uh, everyone for themselves. So from here, I will transition to uh, who we are as a school. Uh, and I have to mention that the biggest leap uh, in terms of uh, program development uh, at this way happened not too long ago. It was in 2017 uh, when we decided to redesign uh, our curriculum uh, and um, create a place-based um, intercultural and um, experiential uh, learning environment. So to give you um, um, a concrete picture of how the week looks like for our students, uh, an entire day of uh, teaching was dedicated to uh, teaching outside of school. So students basically come to school four days a week. It's very traditional. Uh, they have class time in the building. Uh, and every Thursday, uh, they're given uh, a mission that they have to accomplish outside of the, the school. Uh, and we call that day field work day. 
So for the first time, um, and that was a very exciting time for us and a very exciting process, and it still is, uh, the faculty went uh, beyond their discipline and their traditional way of teaching and worked hard at creating uh, interdisciplinary content and opportunities for uh, students to experience the learning outside of school. So each fieldwork uh, is designed so that we make the best use uh, of existing local resources and in a very deliberate way, uh, and our students will talk about that, I think uh, we push students outside of the comfort zone uh, in using the target language in authentic situations uh, within the local community. So all of our elective um, classes are designated as fieldwork classes. Uh, you perhaps saw that on our course catalog. Uh, so what does it mean exactly? So it means that each one of our elective classes has a component of learning that takes place outside of the classroom. Uh, each student's, um, student gets to choose two elective courses. Uh, we offer uh, politics, media, science, art history, and history. Uh, in addition to um, these two electives, students also take four mandatory classes, uh, English, math, uh, French language, and experiential uh, French, which is our signature fieldwork class. So uh, aside from uh, our mission and overarching goals, uh, what makes uh, our program special and successful uh, is the people who work here. Uh, our amazing faculty and, and staff guide our students uh, from day one uh, through the learning in and out of the classroom. Uh, through advisory, co-curriculars, uh, host family, uh, school trips, uh, and uh, provide day-to-day uh, -day support. So uh, I've talked enough for now, I think, and I think everyone wants to hear from uh, our two stars tonight, Anna and Damien. So I'll start with Anna. Uh, Anna, s'il te plaît, peux-tu uh, donner un exemple d'un fieldwork que tu as aimé en particulier et qui s'est déroulé à Rennes? Et s'il te plaît, si tu pouvais te présenter en français. Oui, bien sûr. Uh, donc, je m'appelle Anna, j'habite dans le Maine et je suis une élève à Wingfleet School. Uh, L'année dernière, j'étais un, un junior à SOA France et je suis très heureuse de pouvoir uh, vous parler aujourd'hui. Um, alors, my favorite fieldwork was when we, it was in December, Um, and it was when we went to a protest that was happening in the city. And it was interesting because I think there, were, there was a different fieldwork actually planned for that week. But once this um, political movement started building, all of the teachers and um, faculty at SYA France sort of shifted our plans for the whole week to um, be centered around this really important event, both nationally and locally. So um, to prepare for this day, which was conveniently, I think on a Thursday, um, we in politics, so I, I was uh, in a politics class. So we started learning about why people were upset and why they were going on strike because it was all centered around um, a strike, which as we learned, French people really like to do strikes. Um, and some of us who had to take buses noticed that because they weren't able to take the bus. So in politics, we were learning about that in the classroom. And then in French, we started learning about the vocabulary that we might hear um, at the protests or in the newspapers reading about it. And then on the actual day, we were split up into small groups and we went out to the protest where there was sort of a, I guess, not, not a, pr a procession, I guess, I, that might not be the right word, um, of different unions. And there were a lot of flags. There was some like colorful smoke. There was a lot of chants. And so with our little groups, we were there to observe it and ask questions. And I was with my politics teacher, which was great because he was happy to explain things. And we even ran into one of his friends who is in a teacher's union who gave us some stickers. Um, so that was really interesting just to be completely immersed in it. Um, and we also, it was definitely exciting, but um, I think we all felt very safe um, with our teachers. And um, so then we went back to school and um, we did presentations that we had prepared in politics class. And then the 
kids who were in history did their history presentations on past strikes. And then we actually made our own banners um, with materials um, that we might, if we were going on strike, use. Um, so it was a very interesting field work for me because it really showed me that France, they also have their problems. They don't just have like free education and um, free health care. It's not a utopia, but they, um, they have their own problems and they express them in a different way than we do in the United States. So that was my favorite field work. Merci, Anna. Thank you for sharing. That was one of my favorite, favorite ones as well. So as you guys can you know, hear, it's very much place-based. And uh, the nice thing about our curriculum is that we could actually stop what we were doing and sort of worry about this current event and uh, try to uh, teach students what was actually going on in the city. So that essential question at that point had to be addressed. So thank you, Anna, for, for choosing that one. Uh, Damien, s'il te plaît, un, un, un autre exemple? Oui, uh, merci, madame. Bonjour tout le monde, je m'appelle Damien, je suis un élève en terminale dans une école qui s'appelle Pedi à New Jersey. Je viens de New Jersey et j'étais en France l'année dernière avec SYA. J'ai tellement aimé mon expérience que je suis là aujourd'hui pour parler avec vous. Donc, merci d'être avec nous. OK, so um, my favorite field work that we did last year was to Mont Saint-Michel, which you saw in that video a second ago. Um, Mont Saint-Michel, for those of you who don't know, is a monastery and church that's in the, uh, just north of uh, Britannia. It's right near the border to Normandy, and the whole school took a trip up there. And um, we, you know, when we got there, we got to walk across the water like you, like you saw in the video. But I think the really, uh, the really special part of it was when we got to actually set foot in the monastery, because uh, Anna and I um, were uh, taking an art history class with SYA with one of our teachers, Mr. Sabatier. And Mr. Sabatier made, uh, made sure two weeks beforehand, before we even set foot in the monastery, to teach us all about Romanesque um, architecture, the architecture of cathedrals in France. And Mont Saint-Michel is really uh, amazing because it's, you know, it's, one of the, it's one of the oldest uh, churches in France. It's um, you know, a monastery that's also very old. And being able to actually set foot in the monastery, talk to tour guides there, um, people who are experts on, on the, on the, uh, the site, and to learn from them rather than just learning from a textbook. Because in many other classes you might take in high school, especially art history, you might see a presentation on the board or read a passage in a textbook about a piece of artwork or architecture. But something there's something about standing in that cathedral and like looking up being able to actually see for your with your own eyes the uh um the wonderful architecture that, that's there and you know the complexities of it and kind of pulling that apart with your teacher while you're standing in the cathedral so that was really memorable for me and i think SYA in that sense does a great job at um making field works really really enjoyable making learning enjoyable in that sense and um also making them really memorable because i think you know it's, it's been a year now uh, since we did that. And I don't remember every single thing that we learned in class, but I do remember a lot of the field works because it's not just, you know, a chapter in a textbook. It's a memory that you make with your friends and with your teachers. And uh, that, that's, that in that sense, uh, I think SY does a great job at kind of mixing, um, integrating uh, the field work with the classwork. Merci beaucoup, Damien. That was a great example. Uh, I talked a bit about field work uh, earlier in my presentation, and I referenced to our city here in Rennes, but it's true, field work goes beyond Rennes. And uh, throughout the year, we do field work um, sometimes outside, like in the Mont Saint-Michel example. And uh, obviously during our trips, we, we take a, a trip to Paris for five days. Uh, we go to Marseille for six days. Uh, so wherever we go, uh, you want to imagine the country becoming sort of an extension of our classroom. So that was a great example. Merci, Damien. Um, so I will um, talk about uh, maybe now uh, another very important pillar of our program, uh, our host families. Uh, that's a question we get very often. Uh, how do we select our families? So uh, all prospective um, host families are uh, interviewed by our seasoned and dedicated host family coordinator. Uh, Madame Frollo uh, has been with us for over 15 years. 
she does not only do the best possible placements using uh, the information you provide us, but also provides um, ongoing support, orientation, and appropriate guidance to both the host families and students throughout the year. So I can't really emphasize enough on this call um, the importance of the host family and, and the experience of the homestay. That's a, a real key part of our students' journey and overall experience. Uh, it really provides our students a mean uh, to develop their uh, language proficiency, like we saw in the video, uh, and understanding also of the culture that comes and really completes our academic program. Uh, so we're very thankful to have a wide range of families uh, who all have in common like a sincere desire to share their home and life with our students. Uh, on the other end, we also expect our students to uh, be actively involved in the life of their host family by doing very simple things, uh, such as sharing the day at the dinner table, uh, doing activities with the host families uh, during the weekends, uh, asking questions and just overall being curious about their new country and culture. Um, so most of our SWA students keep in touch with their host family long after they leave. Um, I have many examples, uh, but for time's sake, I'll just uh, say that just last week, uh, we had an alum from 2010 uh, who came by school to say hello, but she actually came to Rennes to visit her host family, uh, which really speaks to the special bond. So I know, Anna, uh, that you can illustrate what I just said by talking about your host parents and, and siblings. So if you could please share uh, your experience. Yes, so my host family, like Madame Kadir said, um, a lot of us do keep in very close contact with our host families. And I actually talked, just talked to my host family this weekend, which was nice to check in. Um, so my host family was a little bit different than a lot of my friends because I had three um, very young host siblings. Um, so one of them was six, one of them was nine, and the oldest was 12. And that was very exciting for me because um, in my own family, I just have a twin brother. So I wanted to have um, some younger host siblings. And it was a really good fit for me because the three, my three younger host siblings um, I always had a playmate and I always had a language partner. So my language skills definitely improved a lot. And then along with that, my host family, they're very active and they included me in everything that they did. So almost every weekend we would either host another family for lunch or we would go to an apéro, which is like sort of a cocktail party. So I, I got to know their friends, which was, it was always a little bit stressful going to the social events but it definitely pushed me with my language and definitely with my comprehension because when they're chatting with their friends, they do not slow down for you. Um, and then along with that, we, they, um, during October break, I went with them to their house in the country and they actually taught me to surf. So that was an interesting experience surfing in October and learning in French. Um, and other things that we'd, we'd often go on hikes on the weekend or go biking. Um, and we also did a lot of cooking together. So along with my host mother teaching me how to make madeleines, um, I taught my host siblings how to make ginger snaps and we made coffee cake and pumpkin bread and that sort of thing. So we shared a lot of special moments together. Um, but staying with a host family or just in another country, it's not always easy as you can expect. So there are of course some kind of rough moments. Um, but one thing that surprised me is that my host family, my, my host parents, they gave me the exact same advice that my parents did almost every time. So I would be having kind of a hard day and they would notice. And then my host, one of my host mother, my host father would come into my room and talk to me. And then I'd call my parents the next day or later and they would say almost the same thing just in two different languages so they're definitely there for you um, no matter what you're going through and they just want to help and um, make your experience as enriching as possible. Merci Anna for painting uh, a full picture here. I, I don't want to put you on the spot but I know that you wrote a beautiful article this past summer that was published can you say a couple of things about that? And you know, maybe we can share it afterwards with 
with the students who are here tonight and their parents? Sure, I wrote an article about my, um, so when we had to leave very abruptly, my host parents gave me a metal lens pan. Thankfully it was in, it was silicone, so it bended and fit my backpack or bent and fit my backpack. But um, I wrote an article about how when I make metal lens here in my kitchen, um, I think of them and how they included me into their family. Um, and then I actually learned after writing that and after that was published that there's an expression in French, um, I think it's Madeleine de Proust, um, which is pretty much exactly what I wrote and quite literally Madeleine's. So. Merci, merci beaucoup, Anna. Très bien. Euh, Damien, est-ce que tu peux nous parler de ta famille euh, d'accueil aussi, s'il te plaît? Yeah, so when I first got to France, my, uh, my linguistic ability was very lacking. <laughs> That's kind of an understatement, but um, I, you know, spoke little to no French, and I found myself sitting at my host family's uh, dinner table the very first night, And I didn't exactly know what to say because, you know, I had learned French in a classroom for two years, but it, it doesn't really prepare you for anything like you're, like you're about to experience when you sit down with, um, you know, I had two host parents, uh, three host siblings, one my age, one in college, and uh, one who was out of college working. And I sat with, um, with the five of them and I wasn't really sure what to say. So we kind of started out by just li like doing the obvious and holding up things and explaining in our, you know, whatever language we were comfortable speaking in. So my host parents didn't speak any French at all. So they were, you know, pointing to things in the kitchen and saying, ah, la cuisine or, you know, something like that. And I would uh, hold up my food. Like I had a bowl of soup in front of me and I was like, uh, like soup. And they'd be like, ah, la soup. And of course it's the same word. So that was, that was an easy one to, to learn. But as time kind of progressed in those first couple of months, um, that was kind of how we communicated and, every night doing that, um, my linguistic ability rapidly increased in, you know, to the point where as we started going to the market, what you saw in the video, uh, every Saturday there's this big market in Rennes um, and we, my whole, my whole host family would bike there all together and we grab our baskets and walk around and I was able to really extend my vocabulary using food because you find so many different types of food there. Um, there's an entire building there just dedicated to seafood. There's an entire, you know, another building just dedicated to meats and poultries and cheeses. And you can go outside and buy any kind of fruit you want, anywhere from uh, Italy, France, Spain, and it's, you know, opens up a whole new world of, of not only good food, but also uh, good vocabulary to learn with their host family. So I started to get really, really good with that. And that, you know, as I spent more time with my host family, I learned a lot more vocabulary that wasn't food related as well, of course. And um, kind of like Anna mentioned my, you know, it was a, it's a big thing in France to have friends over, um, you know, the weekends, throw little parties, you know, drink some champagne or something, have some cheese. And um, so I was often included in that with my host parents. So I, sat my, I found myself sitting with, um, my host parents and their 40 year old friends eating cheese and talking about politics or something. And that's a, a real, um, that's a real experience. because you gotta, you gotta, you gotta have something to say. Um, and they're going to ask you as an American, like, Oh, tell me about this. Tell me about your president. Tell me about your politics. And they really are actually really interested in, in where you come from. And a lot of them don't speak, speak English because Rennes is a remote city. It's remote enough in France that you don't find a lot of native, um, English speakers. So you really have to, it really forces you to start speaking French, learning how to do that. And um, your host family is kind of the way in which you're able to, to learn French on a whole new level um, with conversation, with all different subjects in, in politics, history, everything outside of the classroom is filled in kind of with your host family and your experiences you'll have with them. And it's a really awesome one. And they are very inclusive, like Anna said. So um, it's always a fun time with them. Merci beaucoup, Damien. Thank you for linking uh, your host family experience to language proficiency, which obviously at, at the core of what we do here. And like Charlemagne said, I'll just use a quick quote, uh, to possess another language is to possess a new soul. So thank you. Um, so I will now um, say a few words about uh, co-curriculars. Our students all participate in an activity um, outside of school 
And uh, we are fortunate enough to be in a big city where most activities are offered. Um, and I'll give you a few examples, um, dance, soccer, music, uh, art crew, gymnastics, uh, swimming, rock climbing, uh, and the list goes on. Uh, what's different from the US is that our activities here, all activities in France are detached from school uh, and are offered by uh, either private or municipal clubs. So uh, we have an activity uh, coordinator on campus and uh, Monsieur Monteville has been with us for over 30 years and uh, students actually choose uh, their activity uh, really early on in September. Uh, and one of our first field work uh, during the immersion program is actually titled Finding Your Activity. Uh, so the school requirements um, aims again at having our students participate in an activity outside uh, of the school building and um, connecting with uh, local French students they age. So I'll start with Damien this time. Uh, if you could um, give us an example of, um, um, not an example, what was your activity when you were here, how you picked it and, and your takeaways, what you got out of it. Yeah, so... Um... That first field work we had with Mr. Monteville, he uh, kind of handed out pamphlets to us. Um, they have this huge pamphlet with all the activities and run available to you. And it's pages and pages of, of, of lists and um, all these different things you can do. And I found myself just kind of flipping through that booklet um, with my friends and we weren't really sure what to do because there's so many, you know, there's so many activities, so much to do. And so my friend, Harry, um, he told me that his host mother actually was one of, like a coordinator, kind of a manager of a, of a fencing team. And so he's like, let's go to fencing this Wednesday. Uh, and I said, okay, we can, we can try it out and see how it goes. And so we ended up taking the bus down to Southern Wren where there was this facility, um, which has fencing, a gym, a bunch of different activities, martial arts as well. And we just started fencing with, with some French people. And it was a really, really cool activity because it's not just high schoolers, you're, you know, you'll, you, not just people your age, but it's also adults too. So we had um, a couple French kids our age. We had a few adults who were from France. We had one girl from Germany who was there. Um, and it was a really, really cool experience just to meet people and find a little community in Rennes. And one thing really unique about this facility is um, when you get there, um, the people are super, super friendly. And so when Harry and I first walked in and we introduced ourselves, like the entire, Everybody who, everybody who was fencing in, in that room stopped for a second, said hi to us, greeted us. You do the bisou with some people, you shake, you shake other people's hands, and it's like everything stops for you every time you get there. And it was the same thing with the gym there, too. We went to the gym um, a couple times a week, and every time we walked in, everybody would stop what they were doing, greet us, say hi, ask how we're doing. And it's, it's more of a community than an actual, like uh, a club. I mean, it is a club and it's a very prestigious one too. There were a lot of Olympians who fenced on the French uh, national team who came from that club. So it is a very prestigious club, but it's also just a community of people who are really interested in fencing, but also interested in each other and what everybody's doing. So they always make sure to go out of their way to, to greet, to greet you and uh, ask you how you're doing, which so for me, that was a very different experience from being in America, you know, playing after school sports with like my friends, because you don't get that sense of community. You do in like a, a different manner, but not like the way that you do it uh, in Ren with SYA. And that was a really cool experience for me. Merci beaucoup, uh, Damien. Uh, très bien. And uh, just uh, to sort of emphasize on what Damien said right now, uh, trying out something new, we uh, oftentimes really encourage our students to actually take uh, advantage of the place and, and do something that they wouldn't do in the U.S. because maybe it wasn't offered or they never thought of it. And, and a lot of them uh, do try something new. Uh, Anna, s'il te plaît, ton activité? Yeah. So like Damien, I decided to do something that I hadn't done before in the United States. Um, so I had always done competitive gymnastics. So when I got to run, I did try out a practice um, with a team that was close to my host house. But I, I decided that I wanted to sort of close that and let myself try new things. So I um, signed up with a yoga studio a few blocks away from my host house. And I did that once a week, um, which was excellent for learning the body parts in French. And left and right. You definitely get left and right because otherwise you're going to hit people. Um, and I actually, a, f a few months ago, um, when France was in 
the reconfinement, their quarantine, I got an email saying that my yoga studio, because I was still getting emails from them, um, were doing online classes. So I woke up at 6.30 in the morning and I did one with my old yoga teacher in France. And I think she's a little surprised to see me, but it was fun to be able to do that. And then like Damien, I also went to a gym after school. Um, but also I think it's important to say that if you have an activity that you want to keep doing, it's very possible to do that too. So I had a lot of friends who did volleyball and continue to do that in France. Très bien, merci Anna. That was a very good point, merci. Uh, okay, I'll sort of move on to uh, Rennes and living in Rennes. So I don't want to sound like a tourist agent, but I'll give you a few facts about our beautiful city. Uh, so Rennes is labeled as uh, an art and history city. Its history actually goes back 2000 years. Uh, and it has preserved uh, a medieval and classical heritage through its architecture. Um, it's very well known for its medieval half timbered houses, uh, which you can see behind Shauna's um, screen on her background and Damien as uh, those as well. Uh, also famous for its 17th century parliament, its cathedral. Uh, but at the same time, it's, it's a very young city uh, when you're looking at its demographics um, because it's a, it's a university town. Um, Rennes is also the 10th largest city in France. It has a very unique feel to it. Um, it's, it's both a large city, but it's also very pedestrian. Uh, and you also have a very quick access to uh, rural areas and forests, which are at the foot of the city. Um, we're also very close to the sea. Uh, we're 45 minutes from Saint-Malo and Dinard, which uh, students often visit early on in the year with their host families. Um, it's also an hour and a half from Paris uh, by TGV. Uh, it's been voted several times over the years uh, as best city in France to live in um, for its quality of living. Uh, so we're very proud of that. Uh, it has uh, museums, multiple libraries, uh, sport facilities, uh, cultural centers. Yeah, it has the second biggest farmer's market uh, in France and uh, beautiful parks uh, such as the Tabor Park, which is right next to our school. Um, lastly, uh, you will find a lot of cafe, boulangerie, uh, pâtisserie, crêperie uh, in every street. And uh, our city is actually famous for the crêpe caramel au beurre salé and apple cider, which uh, both Anna and Damien uh, made and bottled uh, in their science class last year. Uh, it's actually still waiting uh, in school to be opened. So uh, just sending a message to both of them whenever you, you guys back here, uh, we, have, we have those kept for you guys. So um, uh, maybe I'll start with um, uh, Damien again, if you could um, describe uh, the city and how it was for you to live here. Yeah, so um, my house, my host family's house was right near school. So not too close to the center of the city, but about a 20 to 30 minute walk. Or if you take the bus, it's even less than that, 15 minutes or so. And so I think the most notable part of Ren, uh, something that makes it really unique is the transport system. You will find you can get anywhere in the city very easily with either a bus or a metro. The metro is really easy to use. There's only one line. So it's not like New York where you have to navigate like a hundred different lines go in multiple directions. There's only one line and it either goes, you know, one direction or the other. So you can't really mess up with that. And um, so when you start at the very center of the city, you find um, almost like a, a Paris type feel to the architecture. It's, you know, these huge streets and you have, um, you know, these big government buildings. But then as you start to make your way to the exterior of the city, you find more buildings like I have in my picture right here, um, which are more traditional to Britannia. And that's really cool because the roads are very um, like bumpy, they're cobblestone roads and you have this really cool architecture, these buildings which stick out and are kind of crooked. And then as you make your way even further outside of the city, it's just fields. So it's kind of this whole um, mesh of, of a feel of a city and you can you know walk couple minutes in one direction to have a totally different feel of a, of a city if you don't like you know the the big streets or something the big um the big building type feel of a city and so another really cool thing about Ren, like uh, Madame Kadir mentioned is there are a lot of parks here um and it's really awesome because you can walk you know five minutes in one direction you know between every couple blocks there's a park um a really, really nice park somewhere, you know? And so right by school, there's Park du, 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 du Tabor. 
and um, there's a whole flower garden there. There's, um, you know, it's, it's like almost a forest, kind of like Central Park in the middle of the city, but there's tons of them. They're all over the place. And so when I was with SYA, we did, um, I started a running club with one of my friends, Josh, and part of the club was to run and kind of just have fun, run, talk with your friends. But then the other aspect of the club is we went to a different park. We tried to go to a different park every single week. So we'd go all around the city, um, running in these different parks, exploring the city and kind of getting a feel for, um, for each different courtier. Um, and so that was really fun. And another really cool thing about REN2 is there are a lot of activities to do, you'll find. So during the winter, for instance, they have this huge carnival that they set up right in the middle of the city, um, right near the uh, movie theater and mall that they have. And there's this, this huge amusement park. Everybody sets up in this um, huge square. And my host brother and I went every single weekend when it was open and we went on these rides and everything. And it's just really fun. You know, you can always find something to do there. Uh, is what I'm trying to say. And, uh, you know, you can take a bus there if you, you know, whatever, whatever is on your mind, you can always take a bus there or the Metro and get wherever you want in a matter of, you know, half hour or less. So it's really nice as a student to be able to navigate that, um, to navigate Renya. Yeah. Merci, Damien. Just quickly on transportation, we didn't say that. There's a lot of things we can't say on, on a short call, but um, our students do get uh, what we call a Corrigo card. So it's a pass, uh, unlimited pass for uh, buses and metros uh, here in Rennes, so they can easily access all parts of the city uh, throughout the year. Uh, Anna, s'il te plaît, à toi. Yes, so even though we did get the bus passes, I really enjoyed going by foot when I could. Um, because Ren is such a walkable city, and I always felt very safe um, walking by myself, even if it was at night. So I think that's something definitely to be said for um, the atmosphere of Ren, uh, because that's probably not true for some other cities. Um, so two of my favorite things to do in Ren were, um, firstly, going to the art museum, because museums, public museums in France are free to um, kids who are 18 and younger. So my friends and I could just sort of take a spin through the museum and not really worry about like, oh, are we appreciating it enough for our ticket price or anything like that. Um, and the art museum in Ren is quite a nice art museum. So we we're very lucky to be able to do that. Um, but then as both Madame Kadir and Damien have mentioned, the market in Ren, um, which is Saturday's mornings is exceptional. So I enjoyed going there first with my host family, um, which was interesting because I got to see um, the connection that he had with the producers that he went to every week. So his cheese man and his egg man and all of that. Um, and then later in the year, I started going, I'd go by myself sometimes just because I liked sort of meandering and taking a little bit of this and a little bit of that or going with my friends and then we do a picnic in the park. Um, and then at the end of the year, when I started my capstone, which I was doing on the connection between local agriculture and the restaurants of Wren, I was able to go with um, a Michelin star chef in Wren when he did his shopping for the week. Um, so I got to see how he looked at the local ingredients and what was in season and actually formed right there on the spot a menu that he would use in his restaurant for the week. Merci beaucoup, Anna. Merci, Damien et, et Anna, pour toutes ces questions. Uh, back to you, Madame Kelly. Great. Thank you so much, um, all of you, for such a, a very colorful, um, lots of details, really, really great um, sort of presentation on what um, the experience of being an SYA France student is like while you're in um, that beautiful city of Rennes. I, I want to ask our parents now um, if you can just share... Um, Amy, Anna's mom, if you could just go first and, and share with this group again, sort of maybe what you were thinking at the time that these parents uh, were going through before, before Anna left, and then maybe, maybe what you were thinking when she got back. Sure. Um, it's, a, it's a huge leap of faith, first of all. Um, I studied abroad, I've lived abroad, so I have that experience, but to be thinking about your child hopping on a plane and flying across the ocean is a whole different kettle of fish it turns out and it was 
it was not an easy decision. It was, you know, I wholeheartedly wanted her to go and I wholeheartedly thought, oh my gosh, if she goes, it will be horrible. It will be, I will, you know, what will it be like? It was a very hard decision for Anna too, who had been, as she said, a competitive gymnast and her heart and soul was in that. And was she ready to, you know, take that leap of faith herself? Um, it was honestly an amazingly positive decision for everybody. It just was such a, it's such an exceptional program. Um, and we knew it right from the start. And, you know, the, the, the thought that SYA puts into how to not only educate kids, but care for the kids and care for the families. And um, from meeting at the airport and getting a chance to chat with people and see who your kids are going to be with to sending you a picture as soon as they arrive and sending pictures of the families once they meet their family. It's just, it's an exceptional program. Even though it's hard to say goodbye, they do give you uh, the advice to give your child some space once they arrive to acclimate and get used to it. And so, you know, you check your phone every 27 seconds thinking maybe they'll text me and let me know they're okay, but you know they're okay. And the the school sends pictures. Uh, Anna's family was wonderful about sending pictures of things they were doing, and that was just fun to see. And, you know, they settle into a rhythm. You settle into a rhythm of communication once a week or so. And, um it really, it's just, it's amazing. And the growth, both linguistically and socially, emotionally, academically, it's all incredible. And just hearing Damien's story about the cheese just made me think of one of the first times I talked to Anna when she was there. And I said, so how's the cheese? And she said, I don't know. It's in a basket on the table, but I don't know how to ask for it. So I have to wait and see if they pass it to me. <laughs> which was kind of funny when she first got there, but it just is, it's an exceptional program and an amazing experience. Highly recommend it. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's, again, it's great to hear from the parent perspective too. And Stephen, Damien's dad. Sure. So, um, you know, if I had the opportunity to meet everybody in person, I could easily chew your ear off for more than an hour about how wonderful and life-changing this experience was. But since we're on Zoom, I'll try to condense it down to just a few minutes here. So my journey as an SYA parent started about two years ago when I got a phone call from Damien. Damien uh, studies at a boarding school about an hour south of where I live. And um, so he called home and he told me about this group came to his school called SYA and shared the experience and invitation to consider studying abroad for his junior year. And so I never thought about this at all. I had friends in college who studied abroad, but didn't give him much thought for high school. I didn't even really know this existed for high school other than exchange student programs. So um, I said, okay, I was open to him applying, but I was unsure about a number of things. And the three biggest things that were on my mind were number one, would he be accepted? Because I had no idea what the criteria was. <laughs> number two, how expensive would it be the financial aid part and all that? And three, the academics, because um, it was a much more liberal arts program, and he was on the track for more science at his school, thinking about pre-med. So, obviously, it worked out. What happened was he applied and got accepted, so there's number one. Um, SYA was wonderful working with his school. Um, Damien has a, a bit, pretty big scholarship with his school. He's very fortunate. He wouldn't be able to go if it wasn't for that, so we had to figure out how this is going to work with SYA. And they worked together at the school and SYA to make it, make it happen for us. So we were very grateful for that. The academics, the third concern was the most interesting for me. Um, at the time, a neurosurgeon came to Damien's school to give a presentation. And after he presented, Damien talked to him. And I remember Damien sharing how this neurosurgeon encouraged him to go study abroad. He's saying that is an experience that's unlike any other. Um, you know, science will always be here and, you know, this is going to broaden your perspective in new ways and you'll also, it'll set you apart in future applications. And so, as you can imagine, Damien's, he's a senior now applying to colleges. Guess what's making its way into a lot of SY, essays, the SYA experience. <laughs> so, it's been good. Um, so, SYA, through this process, the uncertainty, the application, even applying for a student visa, which was not so simple, um, they were wonderful. I really honestly give them an A-plus in terms of communication and professionalism. I'm very grateful for that. 
So we get to early September of 2019 and the students are off. They leave Boston, they fly. We say our goodbyes to Damien. And within a couple of days, we see pictures show up online, maybe on Instagram or on the SYU website, I forget where. And we see his host family meeting him. Now I had no idea, like, like other parents, like who are these strangers my son's gonna be living with, right? And I saw this beautiful picture of the mom, Violaine, and our youngest son with Damien and draped over their shoulders was a French flag on one side and American flag on the other. And I just thought how beautiful that was. And I would learn later on, this was more than just a symbolic gesture. This was a family who really opened their hearts to my son. And he was an extension of their family. They really welcomed him in. Now, uh, real quickly, SYA was um, really good about communicating expectations for the parents. And the two biggest things they um, brought to our attention were homesickness. Two things I remember that is homesickness and uh, the language barrier. Because these kids were really thrown into French, not just the language, but the whole culture, whole city and everything. And so Damien would experience some homesickness. I've learned about that later, just how challenging it was because he kind of kept it quiet during the fall. And uh, the language barrier, that was, it wasn't just learning French in school, it was navigating around a city in French, going into shops and speaking to people who were only fluent in French, they didn't speak a stitch of English. And um, the books he would read for his studies were mostly in French and so on. So this was you know, very challenging. So fast forward to February of 2020, my wife and I were very fortunate to be able to fly to France and visit him. So we took the high-speed train to, to Rennes from Paris. We get there and we're waiting for Damien to appear and all of a sudden he shows up and it was a great reunion, of course. But right away, I noticed changes and I, I noticed you know, really um, some very important things. The first was that uh, how much more independent he had become, how much more of a man he, has grown, he grew into. And just by the way he navigated us around Rennes you know, was a master at the transportation system and the exchange and currency, getting on the buses and all that. And as a foreigner, first time in, in really in France, I was like, I had no idea what to do. I struggled in the coffee shop with money at, at the airport. And they spoke some English there too, but I wasn't used to euros. Anyway, so um, I was really impressed by how just, you know, Daniel was able to get around, be independent. And um and I learned, you know, he wasn't just juggling academics. He was juggling, you know, um, extracurriculars, like I said before, French, and even just the uh, commitments and expectations of the host family. So there was a lot of growth opportunity here, a lot of coming out of comfort zones. And he acclimated to it very well. And I met another couple students, and they also were the same. They, I was impressed by how mature they were, too, and how much they grew through it. Another big change I saw was the French language. Like I said before, SYA um, told us how fluent our kids would be come like Christmas time, you know, December. I was skeptical to be honest with you. And when we were there in, French, in uh, February, we would walk into a lot of stores in Rennes and the people didn't speak any English. So at one point, Damien kind of left me on my own with my wife. And so he taught me a very important phrase, which I think I still remember. Je ne comprends pas français. I don't comprehend French. I, I probably butchered it. Sorry. And um, so I'd walk into a store and sometimes I'd say that and they go, and I say, Inglés? And they say, no. And that's as far as I got. When we walk into a store at Damien, and he was with us most of the time, don't get me wrong. Um, when we'd walk in, I'd watch Damien have a whole conversation in fluent French with the, with the shop owner. And every time we leave, I'd be like, what did they say? What did they say? What did you talk about? I was, you know, like a kid curious. And um, so anyway, it was a great experience just to see how fluent and how confident he had become. The last thing, uh, the great benefit I saw, the growth in Damien was how much SY had broadened his perspective with the education. So like earlier, I mentioned, I was concerned and he was too about, you know, lack of science. SY is more focused on liberal arts, especially with, um, you know, maybe pre-med on in his future, maybe. Um, but at SYA, he learned so much about other things that I never even thought about as a high schooler. Uh, what he learned about history, especially World War I, which is often overshadowed here by World War II, understandably so, but, you know, more necessary war for the French. 
um, politics, talking about you know, strikes and socialism, many other aspects that we don't think a lot about here in the States. The art, the architecture, even just walking around Ren and Damien would stop and point up to a church and explain why it was built a certain way and, and Notre Dame and the history of all that. And it was just, you know, just amazing to, to, to see. And, and to this day, we have a lot of dinner discussions. We talk about politics, things going on in the U.S. right now, of course, and many other things. And I often am interested in hearing his perspective because he learned so much and uh, grew so much in France from a different perspective. So um, anyway, that's pretty much it. I, to kind of conclude, I would say SYA started for me as a nice to have experience to almost a necessity. I think it's amazing, it's life-changing. And so I hope is the next brother here, we have four sons, name means number two of four. I hope Ben, who's next, he's a freshman in high school soon. I hope he'll become part of SYA. Maybe Italy, no offense, Madam Kadir, we'll see. But uh, to, to be determined, so thank you. Thank you, Stephen. That is really heartfelt and again, really helpful to hear all of the different aspects because there's so many different ways I think our students grow when they come to our programs. Um, so now, um, so we're at four o'clock. We are going to do some question and answer, but we have we have gone to four, so we will we will do some questions. I'm going to read through the questions really quick. Um, there's one or two here in the um, chat box, and then we'll go to questions um, um, in the from the audience. I do just want to be clear. There's some questions around year long and semester. I did want to address that. Um, and sort of why as students may have chosen the year long. The, we are offering a semester program for the very first time next year. So um, up until this particular year of students, we've only offered the year long program. Um, so, so, all, so the students only selected the year long program. Next year, we will offer semester spots. The majority of the students will be year long students, but we will have semester spots. And there will be a limited number of those, those spots. There is a semester webinar though, that I encourage you for those who are interested in learning about the semester. It was a couple of weeks ago and it's recorded and it's on our website. And Shauna, maybe you can put the link in the chat box for folks. Um, and there's also a semester page on our website that has a lot of FAQs. And again, we're very happy to schedule a call and talk to you more in more detail about the semester program. Um, so one question here that's for Damien and um, Anna, uh, thanks. It says, thanks for sharing your experiences. Has your time abroad inspired any changes in the tra trajectory of your lives or your education? And how has it perhaps impacted your plans? If in fact it has impacted your plans at this time. Do either of you have anything to, to share there? Anna? Yeah, I can definitely speak to that because before going to SYA, um, if someone asked me like, oh, what do you want to study in college? I'd say I have no idea because I'm the type of person who thinks everything is interesting. Um, but now I, um, which is good that I have more of an idea because I'm almost in college, um, but I'm thinking of environmental studies and um, international relations, both of which, because of my experience um, in France, um, environmental studies, because my host family was very, very environmentally friendly. And that made a very large impact on me and how I want to live my life and make a difference in the world. Um, and then international relations, because um, SYA really showed me how important it is to have a global perspective. Um, and then experiences like going to Model UN in Geneva with our politics club um, showed me how that is such a crucial skill for um, making an impact. So SYA definitely has had a large impact on what I want to do going forward. Great, thanks. David, is there anything you wanted to share on that or? Yeah, sure. Um, so like my dad mentioned, pre-med was kind of what I was thinking before I went to SYA. But as I started to explore more linguistics, history, liberal, liberal arts, um, I started to maybe shift that a little bit. Uh, I still am really interested in biology, but I also want to learn more about linguistics. SYA kind of plants this little seed of interest in you when it comes to linguistics. And I feel like, especially because COVID cut that a little bit short, I 
I have unfinished business in France to, to, you know, a lot of language still to learn, a lot of books to still read. Um, and so in college, as I'm applying to colleges, one thing I'm looking for other than a, a good science program is really good a study abroad programs. So that's kind of on the top of my list. And I definitely want to um, at least at least do a minor in French, maybe do a major if I can do a dual major and spend some time in France. So yeah. great, great, great. I think there's some cider waiting for you when you get back to France, too. Um, so here's a quick question. When do semesters um, end and start? So the semester program, the fall students will start at the same time as the year-long students. So they typically leave the first week of September. Our program dates aren't set yet, but they're typically the first week of September. The fall semester will end right before the, the Christmas break holiday. And the second semester will start um, at the very beginning of January. We're working on setting the dates now. Um, but about the end of the first week, and that will end um, at the at the end of May um, when the year long students are there. So, so that's um, a quick answer there. Is there a maximum number of students SYA rent takes from any given school? No, there isn't. Um, out of the most of our students come from a variety of different schools. There are a handful of schools where we will see multiple applications, but generally, if there were um, 50 students at SYA France, they would represent probably over 40 different unique schools. And those students um, are come from independent schools and, as well as public schools. So um, uh, hopefully that answers that question. Um, for seniors at SYA, what will the college process be like? Um, Mina, do you, can you answer that question? Yeah, sure. So uh, we do have uh, a college liaison on campus. It's actually our uh, English teacher, Madame Conley, uh, who does that with seniors, and she's also uh, the advisor to seniors. So uh, typically, um, the homeschool helps a lot in that process, but if some reason the homeschool is not really uh, following all of that while the student is abroad, uh, our college liaison here uh, takes care of all the work that needs to be done uh, with the student, uh, whether it's about the college essay or the common app uh, or any liaison that needs to be done between uh, the student, the family, and uh, the university. Uh, so we do have that. And since we're talking about college, I just want to say quickly also that uh, we are a testing center uh, here at school. So we do offer the SAT if students want to take it. Uh, while uh, they are abroad, uh, that will be possible to do it within our school uh, building. Just, so there is a section on our website, because there are a couple other little questions just about sort of the college process. There's a section on our website about um, how we support um, our students through the college process, whether or not you're a junior or a senior. Um, obviously, there's um, more work to be done for seniors, if they're, especially if they're working on an ED1 deadline or an ED2 deadline. Um, when they arrive, but um, there's videos and um, other information on, on the website as well. I just want to direct people to that. Um, uh, here's a question for Anna and um, Damien. How is re-entry to your home, what we call a home school, your, your home school, um, and um, did, how was sort of reconnecting? You know, it's a little bit weird because it's a year of COVID and you may or may not have how you ended up going back, but um, certainly coming back and reconnecting with friends and your academics. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, sure. I can talk a little bit about that. Um, so as I mentioned a little earlier, um, our I felt when I left France, I had a little unfinished business because it was very, very, like very abrupt when we left. So um, we were given about 24 hour notice that we had to leave the country a little more than that like you know less than two days though so that was a hassle and as soon as I got back home I kind of you know was a little bit uh, discontent with the with the ending that I had and so I ended up keeping up closely with a lot of my friends from France people who I'd met there um, and then I also ended up talking to a lot of people from home as well because I was back home and so um, I was in quarantine for a while uh, over the summer, so I didn't get to see a lot of people. But as soon as I got back to Petty to school, the re-entry was not as bad as I thought it would be. I kind of just started where I'd left off with my friends and we just kept talking, having fun. And a couple of new things that I found is um, like coming back to, to Petty, um, I was interested in French now, so I started um, 
you know, working with the French club more. I always worked it as a, as a, as a member, my freshman and sophomore years, but now I'm like the leader of the club with one of my friends uh, from SYA who also came from the same school. Um, and so I kind of opened up at home, this whole new community for me in, in the French department. And so reentry really, um, it isn't, it isn't too bad. And you'll find that, especially with your really close friends, they'll notice that things have shifted in you. A lot of my friends still mention today, they're like, oh my gosh, you, you know, you're, you're, you're so much like more well-spoken now because after spending a year in France where you have to kind of think about what you're saying in a different language, you know, you can't just go babbling because you have to kind of think before you speak. That's at least early on, as you get later, you can think less and just speak more. But I find myself kind of thinking before I speak in classrooms with my friends. And um, it's just like a very subtle thing that they started to notice in me that I was like a little more well-spoken after I'd come back. Um, so yeah. Great. And uh, sorry, Rachel. Can I just uh, ask Damien? I think Damien did his uh, college uh, essay on re-entry, uh, and your English teacher, Madame Conley, uh, was telling me the other day that she had read it, and it was very, very touching and very well written. So. Yeah. Mm, yeah my com my. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, go ahead. But yeah, my whole common app essay was was about was about France and about my experience um, from the first. Uh, like day in September to December when I had, when we had, we had this huge um, talent show uh, that we put that the whole SYA school put on and I got to perform there with one of my friends. We wrote a song for it and it was like this whole cool experience we had. And um, I wrote about that experience and then how coming back to America, how, you know, I was, I was really missing that. And there was a whole new world in, in France, which I'd opened up for myself, but then I had to leave all of a sudden. And so it was, um, it was just something you you have to deal with, I guess. But like I've said before, you know, um, I want to get back there in college, and I have this kind of, um, you know, enthusiastic, you know, eagerness. Like I really, really need to get back there. So, right. I wanted to open up the question, the floor to questions, or the the screen to questions. Does is anyone um, want to verbally share a question? Something. Yeah, you sure if you could just identify say your name and sort of where you're from before you ask your question that would be great. Uh okay. Uh bonjour. Uh bonsoir peut-être uh quelque chose que je veux. Uh je m'appelle Cosette, je viens de Massachusetts. Uh back to English. So language proficiency obviously I think you all touched on how it's maybe related to culture and all of that which language classes probably you know have all understood that in all of us um but were there any maybe quirks of French language or local dialect that might have only been picked up and read that you learned? Anna or Damien, do you want to take that? Um, I guess I can try to respond to that. That's a good question. Um, I'd say that I, I, my host family, it probably depends who you ask, but my host family says that, that there is no, they don't have an accent. So they think their French is the French. Um, I know that there, there are also regional languages, but they're not widely spoken. You could probably find one who speaks Breton, um, but it's not something that you'll just hear out on the street necessarily. Um, I think one thing that I learned a lot uh, with my host family was expressions, idiomatic expressions that you just do not learn in a language class. And then once I heard them, now if I'm watching like French TV, I, I can understand them and like, oh, that's what they're saying rather than why are they putting those words together? So I think that's what I, a big takeaway from. That was a great question and extra credit for starting in French. I feel like the immersion program started already on the Zoom call. Uh, I just uh, seriously on a serious note, I just want to say that you know what you said is really important. And uh, we, I remember uh, it was two years ago, one of our students uh, did his capstone um, project uh, on the Breton dialect. And as Anna said, it's not something that's spoken, but it's taught in, in some schools as a special program. And uh, he had noticed that all the streets here uh, were named uh, obviously en français and then in Breton. And he actually very, I mean, it was a very good capstone and I don't have the time to get into the details, but basically uh, as far as um, his active participation um, for his capstone, um, he renamed all the school, all the offices, 
uh, all the classrooms in Breton. So if you if you ever come here, you'll see that my office has you know my title in in French, but also in Breton and and so on with all the classes. So that was a very good question. Any other um, verbal questions? There's a couple more in the chat that I'll go back to, but yes, Heidi. Uh, thank you. For Anna and Damien, I'm curious to know what inspired you to do this? Was it like something that you just learned about and got super excited about or, you know, or yeah, I just, I, I did a junior year abroad and I thought it was incredible and, um, but it's not something that my, you know, kids might naturally decide on their own, especially in high school. So I was just wondering what inspired you. Um, so when I was first, you know, when I first heard of the experience of this way, I was instantly kind of, um, just interested in it because with my family, I have three brothers and with, you know, a lot of people in my family, we don't get around to traveling very often. The furthest I've ever been with my family, I think is, uh, Maine. So we'd never gone uh, too far and I'd never been to Europe before. So I kind of had this nag to to go somewhere that i hadn't been before i'd read about france and europe a lot in books before in history classes and when i sat in the seat my seat uh, community meeting with my school and the you know representative from sya came and spoke to us and was like just presented the entire experience to us what we would be able to do i kind of just lit up because i had never even thought of it as a as a possibility before and then all of a sudden it was like right there in front of me and i felt that if i didn't take it then i would probably regret it and I'm really glad that I did. Great, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, quick question here, does everyone take the same French class or is it separated based on level? It is separated based on level. Mina, do you just wanna talk very briefly when the students arrive, how the, how the process works on how students are placed into classes? Sure, so uh, when they first arrive, we do a robust uh, immersion program that lasts about three weeks. Uh, so at that point, uh, they're all mixed. Um, they're doing English classes and math classes. For math, obviously, there is a math placement test. But at the very beginning, for the first three weeks, everybody's mixed all over. So there are a few uh, French language classes, but uh, the immersion program rotates around field works that are uh, very important for the students to sort of integrate their new life, their environment, their host family, uh, the city in itself. Um, and at the end of the, um, the immersion program, we do a placement test uh, for language. Uh, it's, it's very informal, it's not stressful at all. Uh, all of the teachers participate, our language teachers and our elective teachers, uh, because we, um, we think that we're all language teachers here, uh, even if we're teaching politics or art history. And uh, there is a, a verbal portion to it, and there is a written portion to it as well. And this sort of helps us uh, having uh, a couple of levels, basically, um, of uh, French, uh, so that, you know, if you're a little bit more advanced, because we do get students who come in with uh, an AP French 4 level, and we do have students who come in uh, at the French 2 level. Uh, so later on in the year, if we see that the levels have moved, uh, we, we move sometimes the students from one level to the other. And also to sort of help with the students who come in at a French 2 level, uh, we do have what we call French extra classes. So that's a couple of times a week and uh, students meet uh, for two reasons. So we sort of differentiate instruction for them at that point and those who need more help uh, access that course. And sometimes we have students in the highest level and we wanna also cater to them. And uh, we actually assign French extra to them as well so they can go even faster than um, in the class they actually put in, which is the highest one. Uh, elsewhere, uh, they're not, uh, you guys will not be uh, in different levels. So in elective courses and in English, everyone will be uh, mixed. Wonderful, thank you so much. So we've been together for an hour and 15 minutes and that's a long time on Zoom. So um, I'm gonna sort of wrap this particular event up but I really encourage everyone to schedule a call with our Assistant Director of Admission please reach out to me. I'm happy to have a conversation directly with any of you if we didn't get your questions answered or you have additional questions that you think of, um, as well as, again, content on the website and we can share the, the students' information as well. And if you wanna to talk to a parent, we can connect you with a parent. So 
we know this is a big decision um, and there are a lot of questions that happen on the, the application journey and, and we're, we want to help you get through that. So please stay in touch. I just quick reminder, February 12th is the application deadline. Decisions go out at the end of the first week of March. Um, and um, we look forward to, to being in touch with you while you make this, um, while you get through the application process. So uh, I wanna thank our guests today for giving of their time and preparing for this event. We had a few meetings ahead of this and they just gave up a lot of time. And I, I just wanna thank our students, um, Anna and Damien so much. Um, it's so wonderful and heartening to hear your stories. I've been doing this for quite a while and I never tire of hearing the um, class stories, the host family stories, the extracurriculars, the travel. It's um, amazing to, to hear them from you directly. And I also really wanna thank their parents for preparing some really, really thoughtful um, remarks that really share, I think, and illustrate just what a journey it is. It's not just the child's journey. There's a parent journey too here. And it starts now with the application process and, and it, it and it goes on for quite a while, but I think it's pretty pretty amazing to see your child come home. Even though these students unfortunately had to come home a little early, um, it's pretty amazing. And, and just to follow up very briefly on what Mina was saying about sort of where we are with, with COVID. Um, obviously it's something that we're all living with and we're in a very difficult dark period here in this winter. It was referenced today in the inauguration speech and. We're all as a globe living in a very difficult period, but we do believe um, with vaccines um, and that, that things are going to change. And so as of now, we are very much moving forward with an operational program in the fall. And will there be some adjustments that will need to be made um, for COVID? We don't know at this time, but we have a task force. We are looking at that and we will be communicating with you regularly throughout this process as those things become clear to us all. I often say to families, we're reading the same news you are. So we don't fully know um, how, how things are going to move forward and at what pace, but, but they are. And again, we are very um, hopeful um, that, and, and optimistic uh, that we will be um, fully operational in the fall. So, um, so with that, I wanna end this afternoon's program. Again, I know there are questions, but please stay in touch and reach out to us. And um, we look forward to, to working with you. Thank you, everyone. Merci. Bye. Thank you so much. Merci.